morning. Hope you're all doing well this morning, and welcome to Desert Palm UCC in Tempe, Arizona, and I'm saying that for the live stream people, because I think you all know where you are, and so at least I hope you all know where you are, right? Uh, just a few things this morning. I um, want to remind everybody about the red pads that we have at, at the ends of the pews. Make sure you pass those, fill that information out so we can have good, accurate information about everybody who's attending and being a part of our service. And especially if you're visiting this morning, we would love to have your contact information so we can share with you all the wonderful things that are happening here at Desert Palm. Also, want to make sure that you know the coffee hour and time after the service will be in Mission Hall because it's a little warm right now to be outside. So please gather with us all in Mission Hall as we fellowship together after the worship service. Um, also, I know it was on the announcements just for a little bit, but uh, let's go ahead and honor our graduates because we have some really neat graduates. So here's just a little honor and remembrance of our graduates. So let us gather for a time of worship as Marion leads us in our call to worship. Please join me, and if you are able, please stand. As followers of Christ, we are called to bring a hopeful understanding of our world, declaring that God the created universe good. We are called to bring this hope in God with us wherever we go, declaring that God makes all things new again. Jesus taught that we should love God and love one another. So let's join together in our love of God to worship and give thanks. And our hymn is number 277 for those of you who want to use the hymnal, verses 1 and 3. Please be seated. God of hope, we come into your presence this morning with confidence that you will meet us here. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is tiredness, bring refreshment. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let this place be a sanctuary a safe haven for us, a home for holy words and songs and prayers. As we devote ourselves to you, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, we might as well stay seated and do hymn 408, All My Hope on God is Founded, please. But the text and the words are really fitting for the first verse. So we're going to just sing the first verse through twice. Scripture reading this morning is Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, Peace and Hope. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. How they got me locked in here again. You can, I'd like you to worry about that for a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. I like to walk around, so. Mark and I will talk about it another time. Not, not during the service. We won't talk about it during the service. Hey, before I start, seriously, I, I, I want to say a special thank you to my daughter, Tracy who is right here, and my son-in-law, Tom, who's right here in the front row. They don't get to come very often, and I didn't know they were coming, and it's a really nice gift. And those of you who have kids and know that they do something special for you now and then, it's like a really nice thing. So I, I, I want to mention that. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of a storm, there's a golden sky and a sweet silver song of a lark. 
Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. That took a lot of courage, because if, if any of you were here the last time I started a sermon with a song, it was incredibly embarrassing and awful. And so that took a lot of courage right there. Did you? Oh, no. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that time. I get that. Yeah. You know, if you know that song, and some of you do, you know it's from the musical uh, uh, Carousel, I think. It's Carousel, right? Carousel by Roger and Hammerstein. And even though it wasn't written necessarily as a hymn, it is a hymn, and it is a very Christian hymn. Because there was a time, and, and maybe... We haven't quite fully got away from it, but there was a time when people thought of their gods as someone out there, you know, some, they, uh, uh, some kind of entity that existed somewhere. And those gods had powers to both grant privileges and to punish. If you've read the Old Testament, and I don't suggest you do, but if you read the Old Testament, you're going to see some of that. And it, I, I was at... Um, when my youngest, grand, my oldest granddaughter went to camp for the first time, I made the mistake of going with her, thinking she needed my support. That was wrong. Anyway, so I was up there, and I didn't have much to do, and I got out. I thought, you know, I haven't read the Old Testament much, so I got out the book of Samuel. It's scary. It's very scary. Anyway, and there was a time when people believed that the gods were entities that existed out there. And if you got a good crop, if things were going well for you, you obviously pleased the gods. But if a, a year came where the rains didn't come or the crops didn't grow for whatever reason or a plague of locusts or whatever, you obviously didn't please the gods. So gods were entities that just had this kind of whimsical power to control and, and deal with your life. And then along came Christ. Along came Jesus. And with Jesus, this is what we affirm as Christians, with Jesus, God comes down and lives with us. Think about that. This is, God no longer stays out there just handling. God actually comes into the world and lives with us. God actually experiences what it's like. It's almost as though God says, I, I, I don't understand these human beings. I need to know what it's like to be a human being. So he sends his son Jesus, and through Jesus he lives in the world. Jesus got angry. Jesus got sad. On the cross, Jesus doubted. Jesus felt the things that human beings feel. He experienced things. He got tempted. Gods didn't get tempted before. He got tempted. And there were some pretty strong temptations, too. He felt what it was like to be human. He also realized he couldn't do the job alone, so he gathered a group of people around him. And sometimes, my granddaughters do this to me all the time, but sometimes... They had to remind Jesus what he should be doing. When, on, when he was preaching on the mount and, and the people had nothing to eat, one of the disciples tapped him on the shoulder and said, excuse me, I think they got to eat. And so sometimes they had to re Jesus had to be reminded, like any of us, right? We can get caught up in our stuff, and it's like somebody reminds us. I have two granddaughters who do that constantly. Oh, just con you know what? They, where they learned it was from their grandma, and... So when the grandma's not there, she can be comforted to know that somebody is pointing out my likelihood of doing something inappropriate. Um, this is what Cheyenne, who's sitting right here with her mom and dad, Cheyenne, this is what she says to me, Grandpa, we're in public. <laughs> Meaning, stop what you're doing, we're in public. But that's, what, that's the essence of our Christian faith, is that God lives with us and experiences what it's like. And then God no longer is this mystical figure that exists out there somewhere. 
God is now our companion. Think about that. God is now not somebody we pray to and say, oh, God, would you fix this? Or, yeah, we pray to God and we, we say, God, be with the people who are sick in our life. God, help and support the people who are sick in our life. But we know that God is not out there to do some magic. We say, God, thank you for being here with us during this difficult time in our lives. Or the joys in our life, the same thing. God is now, through Jesus Christ, God is now a companion. And even when Jesus leaves the world, he says, God is still going to stay here as your companion through the Holy Spirit. It's Trinity Sunday, so that covered all three of the Trinity things, just so you know. And if Tom comes back and says, did Dale preach about Trinity, you can say yes. It wasn't intended, but I thought I should cover it. Anyway, um, so this week, I had this odd experience, to be honest with you. When I, when I put a sermon together, one of the things that happens for me is I, I try to live inside that sermon. And as I was putting it together this week, what I recognized is, if God is my companion, if God is with me as my companion, rather than some, you know, as a kid, it was nice to have a magician out there. You know, you could say, oh, yeah, why does God let bad? It doesn't matter. If God is my companion, this is what I get to do. I can allow God to help me carry the weight. I don't know what weight you brought here this morning. Maybe there's stuff going on in your family. Maybe you're worried about people in your family. Maybe there's some financial concerns. I don't know what weight you bring here. I, I bring a lot of them here. Out there in the world, we are almost every day confronted with, what, and even on an international and national scale, we're confronted with a weight. Like, how can this be happening? How can this kind of, what, what should I have been doing? About, we get this weight on our shoulders because we are people of the Spirit, and we care. We care about everyone. We care about all people. And when bad things are happening, when people are suffering, we care. And then we find ourselves with a weight to carry. But the good news is that we have a companion. And at first I thought, oh, the job of the companion is just to kind of like, you know, pat you on the head or the shoulder and go, it's okay. And then I realized that wasn't the case. Because as I went through, you know, it, the, the common little weights that we carry all week, you know, the maybe not feeling well, whatever it might be, I realized it isn't that my companion, God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, it isn't that my companion pats me on the shoulder and says, that'll be okay, and all of a sudden I feel okay. They weren't calling me. Anyway, listen, no, that, that's, not what it, that's not what the companion is do, does for us. The companion helps us carry the weight. Think about that. When you're right in the midst of a struggle in your life, and you're sitting there and you're feeling anxious or scared or sad or whatever, if you open yourself and allow yourself to feel the spiritual companionship of the universe, God, you can share the weight. God will help you carry the weight. When I got there finally in the sermon, when I got there and I realized that's, that's exactly what the spiritual companion does for us, then all of a sudden I realized over the next few days as I, as I would remind myself of that. You know, it is, God as a companion, it isn't like when something bad happens to me, my first thing to think is, oh, I got God here. He can help me carry this. No, my first thing is to swear a lot. And then, and then, maybe after a little bit of complaining about, you know, how hard it is to be me or how hard it is to deal with this stuff, that's when I remind myself, I'm not here alone. I am not alone. And I Quietly, because here's, if you want to be with your companion, you've got to let go of yourself. That's not easy. Mary and I were just talking about that. Mary and I, I'm sorry, Marianne. 
This wasn't planned. Mary, Mary and I were just talking about this. The fact that we don't like giving up control. And as you get older, guess what happens? My, ki my grandkids do this, and my daughter does this too to me all the time. Actually, my wife does it too because she thinks I'm old. Anyway, um, all the time saying, Grandpa, this is what you should be doing. And sometimes it's very helpful so I don't run over somebody. But um, we don't like giving up control. And at that point in our life where people come to us and say, hey, Marion, I'm sorry, you're going to have to stop driving. Oh, no, no, no. We don't like giving up control. But if we're going to have our comp this companion, God, this companion with us, we got to get out of ourselves. We got to be with God. God never goes anywhere. The spiritual power of the universe is always with us. And because it's always with us, what we have to do is let go. Just let go of controlling things. Let go of trying to make sense out of something. That's a big one. That's a very big one. I don't know about it for you, but that's a big one for me. I want to try to make sense out of something. There's no sense in a lot of things that are happening. But there is someone who will help us carry that burden so that we don't get worn out. There was a man, and I, I knew I would uh, not quite remember his full name, but his last name was Safford, and this was back a long time ago. He was a businessman in Chicago just before the Chicago, Chicago big Chicago fire. And he had all these businesses in Chicago, was successful. And then the Chicago fire came along and destroyed a lot of his businesses. And he had to rebuild, and he thought, well, you know, this has been hard. And so he sent his wife and his four daughters to Paris for a vacation. He said, I'll follow you as soon as I can get done with some of this work. He sent them to Paris for a vacation. And they got on a boat, and they started across the sea. This was back a long time ago, uh, probably the early 1900s, I think. They got on a boat and went to cross the sea, and halfway across the boat sank. And all four of his daughters were drowned. His wife survived. She got to France, and she messaged him, sent a message saying, listen, we've lost all four of our daughters, and I survived, and I don't know what to do. And Mr. Safford quickly put things together and got on a boat to go be with his wife. And when they were halfway across the ocean, the captain called him up from his stateroom, and he said, listen, Mr. Safford, I thought you might want to know this is the spot where the ship went down and your daughters were drowned. And I'm sure the captain was thinking, you know, he wants to grieve here. But instead of grieving, he reached into his pocket. He took out a pad and a pa paper, and he wrote down some words which were later turned into a hymn. When faith like a river attendeth our way, when troubles like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, God has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. We can only say that when we allow God, our companion, to help us carry all of the burdens, the little ones and the big ones, in our life. Amen. is our hope in life and death Christ alone Christ alone what is our only confidence that our souls to God belong who holds our days within their hand what comes apart from God's command and what will keep us to the end? 
the love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess Christ our hope in life and What truth can calm the troubled soul? God is good, God is good. Where is God's grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's love, who holds our faith when fears arise, who stands above the stormy trail, who sends the waves that bring us nigh unto the shore, the rock of Christ. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess Christ our hope in life and To the grave, what will we sing? Christ lives, Christ lives, and what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with God, there will be rise to meet our God, then this world pain will be destroyed. And we will feast in endless joy when Christ is ours forevermore. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess. Christ our Lord in life and death. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess. Christ our hope in life and death. Now and ever join me in prayer. God of hope, we humbly present these gifts in recognition of the grace that you offer us each and every day. You have endowed us with great bounty. Today we give a portion of this bounty to you as a generous expression of our gratitude. We exalt your holy name as we participate in this sacrificial act of offering ourselves to you, we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We go from this place. This is, this is anyone out there who happens to be watching today over a, a, a monitor, I want you to know this, this is the place I come when I can't 
feel my companion. And here I feel you, all of you, this building, all of this. God is here. And now our service is over. And we have, we have responsibilities. God gives us responsibilities to go out and heal the world in our own little ways, each of our own little ways. But we don't go alone. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's sing Holly, Holly, Holly.